All right. Wonderful. Well, listen, we're excited to be here and, you know, appreciate the opportunity to spend time with everybody today. Um, you know, we're here to talk about uh, prioritizing mental health and protecting our mental health as real estate agents, uh, specifically as it pertains to us in the world uh, and industry of real estate. And, you know, it's a little different for us. Um, you know, it's not, uh, it's a different industry. I think we have different priorities. We have different proximity and access to people and things. So, um, you know, it's crucial for us to achieve, uh, it, to achieve our success in the industry. Uh, it provides us, um, you know, being a realtor provides us some freedom to shape our own um, uh, schedule and what our days look like. But it also, uh, you know, can be a, a catch-22 where we have long hours <laughs> dealing with emotional stress of our clients and transactions and holding things together, uh, you know, on all sides of the deal. So it's important for us to effectively manage our stress, our focus, our well-being, um, all of the things that pertain to us as individuals in our industry. Uh, so we have a panel of uh, incredible agents today. Um, so we'll just take a few minutes um, each to introduce ourselves and, and where we do business, and uh, and then we'll go on from there. So Jessica Nesito, uh, Nieto, sorry, I almost said Nesito, Jessica Nieto. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation is necesito. Uh, great to be here. Thank you, Ziggy and Reggie, for being in the room. We're going to have a great conversation together today. I'm Jessica Nieto. I'm a licensed realtor in California, Washington, and Oregon. I've been at EXP Realty since March of 2020. So uh, definitely had some headwinds uh, in, the, in the industry since I've joined EXP and it's the best choice I made. So glad to be collaborating with you two. I also am a real estate coach, so excited to kind of bring some of that experience to the table. I get an opportunity to speak to a lot of realtors every day, so I get some good insights. How about you, Reggie? Oh, yes. I am a licensed realtor, but also I'm in the com EXP commercial world, so I took the deep dive into the dark side, <laughs> we say, uh, in the commercial world. Made that transition this year. It has been phenomenal. Great mm -hmm. mentorship great training and uh, we're all one big family. It's not really a division within our organization. We're all like a one big merged family. Yeah. Um, so that's the beauty of EXP. But along with that there, I also operate in the EXP military network. I am the national director of veteran resources, uh, prior US Navy veteran and mental health is huge in our community, vital. Mm -hmm. and uh, must be talked about. And I'm just appreciative of being here today with you ladies. Awesome. Uh, wonderful. Yeah. You, Ziggy? We can't Thank miss you so much. Here, so. Yeah, no. So I'm a, I'm a realtor. I practice real estate in New York State. Um, the I've been in real estate for eight. I think this is my eighth year, four of those with EXP Realty. And boy, best decision I ever made. Holy cow. And uh, you know, I, I attend meetings regularly and just fall in love over and over again with this company and the things that we're doing and how we're doing it. And even just something as simple as bringing this to the forefront of the conversation, right, right. is just, you know, is astounding. And uh, yeah, you know, I love what I do and wouldn't change it for the world. So and, you know, part of our focus today is um, to focus on the tools and strategies, resources around, uh, you know, mental health and to, you know, help remove some of that stigma, right? Um, so with resources, environments, you know, and we'll talk thing really quickly about things like boundaries, um, schedules, being proactive, setting um, expectations, right, early and upfront so that people, are, our clients know what to expect and set them at ease and that helps us uh, as well. So, you know, Jessica, really quick, why don't we just start there with, you know, what are some of the boundaries or expectations that you set early on in your conversations to protect, you know, uh, your boundaries, to set those expectations so that you can better manage your business and your clients? Absolutely. So two things. One, back to what you were talking about at the very beginning in the introduction, you were talking about when you get into this business, we, we have this, we want freedom, right? We all want freedom. So you get, oh, I'm going to be a real estate agent so that I can be my own boss and I can have freedom. But then what I notice is as a real estate agent, when you come into the industry, you lose your sense of gravity a bit. 
because you don't have that those things that the that structure and that that format to to exist in during your day and that you're not quite sure how to structure everything so that it works for you and then you start focusing on the external forces that are coming in right it's when the clients are available mm -hmm. it's when your colleagues are available it's when your mentors and coaches and when classes are happening and you start building this lifestyle around these external forces and then often, unfortunately, until you burn out or really have an epiphany, do you decide to design your real estate business around how you function best when you're optimally, you know, functioning mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. So for me, it's all about getting grounded and really uh, creating boundaries is step number one. Um, and I'll just put it in an example. So it's because we want to give everybody some stuff they can take away today that they that's pragmatic and, and they can plug into their life is if you already are uncomfortable having taking calls at 7 p.m. because that's really the only time you have with your family, then stop thinking about how that has to change so that you could do more business. Mm. Right. So rather than that, how can you do business? What kind of clients can you work with that don't want to talk to you at seven o'clock? So just one little one little example there. That's crucial. And when you when you start identifying how you can build a business around your lifestyle so that you can function and feel good when you're when you're doing the work, then you're going to be happier. How about you, Reggie? I would say first with me, because everybody is different. I would say having a knowledge of yourself mm. and understanding of yourself, because everybody has a different way how they communicate with their clients. And everybody has a different way of how they operate daily when things come mm -hmm. up. Because in real estate, things come up. Right. Problems come up. How are you going to deal with the issues? So with me, I would say understanding who you are, what things you can deal with, and what things that you can just maybe assign to an assistant or a virtual assistant and delegate. Because a lot of times we as realtors or commercial advisors or commercial brokers want to do everything ourselves because it has mm -hmm. to go a certain way. But really, we have to guard it with our boundaries. And Jessica, you mentioned it. Boundaries are hugely important. You have to put that down. And then the expectations with your clients, being upfront mm -hmm. with them, being mm -hmm. transparent. Hey, mm -hmm. these are the times I'm available. These are the times I'm not available. What times are you available? What's your forms of communication and contact? And if you put that up front along with, hey, these are my duties, this is how I'm going to work and operate with you, then it's not where something falls off. Right. It's not reactive. Exactly. 100% that works. I agree with you, Reggie. It's just communicating up front and then everyone knows what to expect. And it's hard to fix it later. It's hard to go with, like, oh, and then you find you could find yourself apologizing. And that that's, doesn't feel good either. Hey, sorry, I couldn't take your call last night. I was living my best life, not talking at <laughs> o'clock at night. <laughs> wow. uh, absolutely, that's so funny, Jessica. That's, that's hysterical. <laughs> but it, but it is right, and that goes right into knowing yourself, right? Knowing yourself. What are your priorities? And identify that upfront and early on for yourself. Set your schedule so that you can then. Uh, better assist and integrate with others' schedules. So, you know, it kind of goes back to that big rock theory, right? Where you take the big rocks, the most important priorities, right? You put them in the jar. And for me, those would be, you know, my health, physical health, my family, um, and any other priorities, right? Whether it's a doctor's appointment, put it out on your schedule, including your vacations, right? Yep. Plan your vacation so that ahead of time, you know, when you're not available, when you have to find somebody to cover for you or delegate. Right. And then backfill. OK, these are the times that I can prospect and have appointments and do showings. And these are the times that I can't. Uh, and that's the first step to knowing ourselves for sure. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and that, you know, so let's let's kind of just slide right in there to schedule. Right. Uh, you know, how do you take care of your best self, Jessica, so that you can be our best for our clients. Because if we're not taking care of ourselves and doing what we have to do, and if we're stressed out about something else that's important to us, we're not going to be providing the best service. So how, what does your schedule look like and how do you prioritize that? Sure. So my schedule is always different. Um, let me say this. I start my morning with a few questions to myself. And this is what helps me is I ask myself in the morning, how are, how are you feeling? 
what's your perspective of the day? And when I ask myself those questions, sometimes I'll find the thing that I'm, you know, maybe if I'm dreading something or I'm feeling not great about the day, then I'm able to identify, I'm already doing the work there that will help me sleep better that night because I know where I need to focus. And going back to, you know, it's for me, it's the power of three. As soon as something bothers me three times, that's a task related type thing. That's when I decide I've got to find a permanent solution or a temporary solution to, to leverage it, to leverage it better. So my schedule is basically chunks of time. So I have chunks of time on my calendar that I have blocked out that I spend doing specific things, uh, whatever my project is at the moment that I'm working on or whatever outcome I'm trying to achieve. I fill those chunks in with massive action and doing the things that I know are required to achieve that result. And then outside of that, I have a Calendly that's built out with uh, chunk blocks of time that I offer to people for different things. Um, and then, like you said, like backfilling is the best way. And again, with family vacations, for example, I have something on my calendar that pops up every morning and it says family, coffee, mindset, dogs go outside. And so at five in the morning that pops up and it's a reminder to me that says, this is what's important. If you start your day with this, you will be happier all day. Um, and sometimes it moves around. You have to give yourself some leniency and some grace. So that's what I'd share about. And time, I'll just add, is the one thing that everybody in real estate seems to say they can't master. But it's the other things not in alignment and optimized that are making, unfortunately, why time seems hard. Mm. So focusing just on time, it's going to be hard because first you've got to get other things in alignment like energy. Right, right Reggie? Absolutely. So true. The energy and time. Um, I'll go ahead and slide right in. My mentor, Mike, uh, within the commercial world, he told me something last week because we do weekly meetings. And he said, we look at commissions as, OK, how much money I'm making. But look at the time. Time mm -hmm. is the debt you cannot get back. Right. And each of us have our own time that we're predestined with, that we're blessed with. So making most of that time when you first wake up in the morning, I know with me, I start out with gratitude. Yeah. Thank you for waking up in the morning. Just simple. Right before I get my foot out of bed, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I visualize how my day is going to go. And then observing like a scientist like Niels Bohr, Nikola Tesla, hey, this is how my day is going to go. I see you, Ziggy, you smiling there. <laughs> and with that there, out of you know, meditation or prayer, whatever you do, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Then from there, heading to affirmations, affirming I'm having, I am doing awesome day. I am doing great today. And mm -hmm. literally, I come into this room in here and I have my affirmations on the, on the wall. And I look at them every day mm -hmm. in the morning and in at night. Yeah. And they help ground you who you are. And then Jessica, you mentioned, say, hey, 5 a.m. in the morning, I get my coffee, go outside, whatever, just breathing. Just the simple things. It's, it may sound cliche, but this stuff is real because, again, it's a balance Absolutely. with professionals, with family people. We also have ourselves. So intertwine them both collectively. It just makes us more of a well-rounded person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Jessica, you had talked about uh, do basically a do it, ditch it or delegate it. Right. Those yeah. that that three kind of three strikes. I got to figure out how to deal with this. Right. It's come up three <laughs> times. For me. What am I going to do with it? Am I going to do it, ditch it or delegate it? And that's you know, those are the three D's and they're super powerful D's. If it's something that I have to do, when can I do it? Do I need to do it? Well, ditch it or delegate it. Does it need to be get done? And if so, by who? Uh, great book is who, not how, right? right? It doesn't have to be me that does it. It needs to get done, but it doesn't have to be by me. And Reggie, uh, visualization and um, meditation. <laughs> I mm -hmm. almost said something else. That wouldn't have been good. Uh, <laughs> visualization and meditation, super important, right? Because it is, I mean, you know, getting up, Jessica, checking in with ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Every day, every hour, seeing how, am I hungry? Do I have a headache, right? Have I gotten enough sleep? Those, am I drinking enough water? Those are all important things for our environment. And what do I need to do to take care of that? If I'm not yeah. uh, um, performing at my highest, best purpose, what do I do? What do I need to do to take care of that? So 
super important stuff. Um, and that's how you change habits too, Ziggy. Right. Say that again. If you're asking yourself those questions more often, you know, like, hey, why do I feel this way? What's going on? And you're checking in with yourself and you, you make time for reflection. You'll notice that when you have certain reactions, it, it's tied to something else and you start picking up those patterns. You know, you can take a note of it and you'll start seeing some parallels. And when you notice those things, that's when you know that you've identified an opportunity where you can change a habit by associating that experience with something new. And that's deep stuff. But mm. in real estate, we're moving so fast. And I feel like so many real estate agents reprioritize what's most important, which is taking time for re reflection. Mm. Um, it's you're too busy to sit quiet. Right. What do most billionaires do? Sit and think mm -hmm. and reflect. You know, yeah. Glenn, I'm sure, spends a lot of time <laughs> reading and thinking. And thank goodness. So imagine if we took that time to reflect on how can we take these things that are driving us nuts and find a solution in a couple hours of quiet time. I promise you, you can find an answer. Absolutely. And I think some of that comes with our confidence, right? Our ability to perform and our confidence in our self. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so how, uh, you know, how do you um, get the necessary, what I call reps, right? <laughs> reps, yeah. uh, practice, we need to practice on a certain level as professionals, mm -hmm. right? Surgeons practice, pilots practice, uh, you know, as real estate agents, we need to practice. And it's in that practice that it builds our self-belief, our self-confidence, which helps us then be better at what we do, more efficient. It makes it much more um, uh, aut um, automatic so that we don't have to think about it. I know Absolutely. that when I'm running down a checklist in my mind, it's I do A, B, C, D, and it allows me to then focus on the person that I'm speaking with instead of thinking, what is it that I'm supposed to do next while they're talking? And I've totally missed, you know, what it is that they're saying. Mm -hmm. So, Jessica, could you talk a little bit to, you know, how do you build self-confidence and what does that look like for you? Sure. I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, which is first having self-awareness. That's number one. You have to start with self-awareness, right? How am I showing up? How are people reacting to me? If I'm missing out on opportunities, is it them? Is it me? Is there something I could try? And when you're trying to develop new behaviors, number one for me that's been easiest is to create little things that are physical objects that help remind me to be aware of it. So for example, I heard this great example from Ed Milet. He was talking about self-confidence versus self-worth. And he would go in and into a coffee shop in the morning and just ask people, hey, how are you? And then, you know, that thing that's called a pause where you actually wait for the answer <laughs> in real estate. Sometimes that is forgotten, right? It's, hey, this is Jessica. I'm calling about your listing. One, two, three Main Street. How are you? Is, are, do you have any offers? It's like that was a whole that was one sentence. And then it's, you know, anyway. So the point is going back to self-worth is if, if you don't feel, for me, I've always been confident. Like I can go into a room, I'll kick the door in, I'll get in there, I'll do the deal, I'll negotiate, I feel great, I'll leave, I'll go to an event, I'm ready, I'm prepared, I'll show up, I feel great to be there. But sometimes in that room, I've experienced, and this is where I figured out the difference, the self-worth versus the self-confidence, is that you feel like, do I belong here? <laughs> Right. And so in order for me to get to stretch that muscle, it, I would start to have conversations where you have that energy exchange with people that is truly seeing people. Right. So people want to be seen. We want to be seen. There's an exchange of energy when that happens. So you can start small by practicing empathy and kindness. And when you have that exchange with people, you get really good feedback from them because they're grateful. There's, there's gratitude coming back to you. And when you have that and people recognize how you saw them and, and how that made them feel, in my experience, you get the feedback that you do have value and that you are giving people value when you interact with them. And that for me has really helped with my self-worth versus the confidence that I thought it was all about self-confidence. So I hope that resonates with somebody. <laughs> Absolutely. How about you, Reggie? I would say 
how I built self confidence is experiences, things I've been through. Because those experiences shape and mold who you are. And each of us have different environments that crafted and molded us like the potter's will, right? Yeah. So, for instance, with me being, let's say, prior military, there's things I've seen, things I've done that a lot of people have not done before. So whenever I'm in a room with somebody and I'm like, if I can do this or I've done this before, this is not going to affect me. Whatever they say is not going to affect me. My life is not in jeopardy right now no matter who they are. And I could say it internally to myself, not in an arrogant way, mm -hmm. but boldly within myself going inward to my heart saying, you know what? Everything's going to be all right. Just realizing everything's going to be fine when you're with this client and really listening to them. Like Dr. Mark Goldstein has a book called Just Listen, being an active mm -hmm. listener, looking at not what they necessarily say, but how they say it and the nonverbal cues, picking up on those micro things, because sometimes we forget about that. But also on another level, journaling things that you learned from those experiences. So when you go through to the next situation, you can look back, oh, let's say two years ago, when you had this client that was not happy. You can say, oh, wow, this is what really occurred last time. Now, this is how I'm going to apply it and move forward as a solution. Yeah. I also wanted to bring up um, our interactions with clients is one. Our interaction in the way we show up for our family is another. Another one is the realtor that we're associating with in the industry or even our client. But when, when you're doing a, a negotiation, emotional intelligence is, for me, number one to win. Mm -hmm. Because when you stay consistent, Number one, they can't read you as well, right? <laughs> but two, when you treat the agent with respect throughout the negotiation, they feel at the end, it's like a handshake and stay in touch versus, you know, say you, I'm sure who's experienced an agent kind of losing their cool a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And you got to worry about them because they're, they're obviously, that, that's the way they're showing up. They're probably showing up there elsewhere. And so in terms of my reputation and the trust I want to build in the industry, that's a hot topic for me. I know we were only here for a short time. So I want to make sure that came up as specific to real estate. You've got to, you've got to really focus on, on how you show up in a negotiation. There's some good clues there into how you can improve uh, the outcomes for your clients. Absolutely. And that's a great point. I was just actually talking to a client who uh, and I said, you know, just that, like the relationships that I'm building with other realtors mm -hmm. uh, have directly impacted some of the deals that I've had because they know that I'm a I'm a person of my word, that I will do my damnedest to get that thing through to the closing table, that I will go above and beyond, uh, you know, to keep a deal together if there's a deal to be had and I'm respectful, I'm a, you know, I, I communicate effectively. And those are uh, skills, especially going into this market there that are going to serve us well, but the, having the other agent know that the relationship that we're building um, uh, on the other side of that deal speaks volumes because it has helped me, you know, be the successful bidder in a bidding war because, Oh, you know, Ziggy, I've dealt with her before on the other side of deals. Right. I know that she'll get the job done. Right. And the same from the listing perspective. So, uh, you know, and uh, it goes back to something that you said earlier, Jessica, you know, being, I, I think you said kind and courteous or empathetic, you know, just all of those things, right? We're here for a short period of time. Let's, you know, be our best self while we're here. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's no reason that we can't. Uh, and we've talked about a lot of fantastic things, visualization, meditation, self-worth, um, scheduling, prioritization, delegating, what... Um, all of those things to me fall into a category of proactivity, right? Being proactive, right? We're not running uh, running into this china shop like a bull, right? We're kind of waltzing in as a, I don't know what, a cat, <laughs> <laughs> right? We're preparing our environment. We're yeah. intentionally um, attacking our day, it sounds like, right? We're very thoughtful about how we're proceeding, Um how we're running a business, how we're taking care of ourselves and our environment. Um, so as far as what else being proactive, 
um, from, from, right. From, uh, I mean, stresses from anything. How do you, how else do you proactively manage yourself, your business, your life? Build you, you, <laughs> yeah, you've got to be in community with people, right? I didn't meet you. Uh, however many minutes we've been, I didn't just meet you. I've met you because we, we've interacted before. Um, EXP is a powerful platform that, has asked us to come back and have this conversation. We had it at a national conference um, with people in the audience in real life. So we're here so we can share it even further. Um, so for me, it, it's building community with people, especially in, your, in the beginning of your career, it, it, it seems to come like natural that people think, oh, I've got to go out and meet other people in the real estate industry. But as you get further along in your career and you get busier, like people will say, oh, I'm busy or I'm too busy to go to this or I'm too busy to go to that. Um, it, that's that's when I think it's even more crucial that you get into community with people because you have to continue to grow. And what happens when people have tons of money and tons of success even in this business, they get either burnt out or they have a realization that they need to start investing in the in the in the basic things of mental health and physical health, emotional health, and spiritual health, right? So, so for me, it's like, why wait till then, you know, do a reflection now and start today and get into community with people. Where can you do that? We have the Healthy Mind Collective is a group within 1EXP. So reach out to them on Workplace, uh, whether you're at EXP or you're not at EXP yet, you know, there's plenty of, of things that you could do. Like Reggie said, um, I'll just keep this short as, is find something that is, you know, whether it's meditation or it's prayer, try to create habits and, and don't, and protect them. Make them non-negotiables. Non-negotiable. Right? If someone says, hey, can you meet at this time? No. <laughs> but I can meet you at this time. You know, be brave, be courageous, and, uh, you know, stand up for what's most important so you can be showing up your best. Absolutely. How about you, Reggie? I would say having a routine and a ritual that you do. And this is what leads to Jessica. Garden, whatever your ritual or routine, mm -hmm. no. Be afraid not to say no. Because a lot of times us as agents or commercial agents, we like to say yes to certain things. And really, it's too much of our time or spending too much of our energy. It's not only just money and time, but it's also energy. Those three things are all just as important. No one, no one on the trifecta is, is bigger or greater than the other one. Then the other thing I would say is planning. Plan mm -hmm. out your week. Plan out a night before. A lot of the high-end achievers, they plan their stuff. They're like chess players, not mm -hmm. checkers, reacting, as Jessica says. You, when you plan, it makes it easier and takes the stress off you, not only just in your business, with your clients and interacting on negotiations, on the side of the table, also spiritually, mentally, emotionally, all that stuff is so important. And that's what I do is I try to at least plan out my, my day ahead of time. Um, some things come up. I mean, you can't control everything. You know, that's just the, the they call it the laws of hermeticism. You know, the pendulum swings. But the best thing you can do is ride that wave on top of that pendulum mm -hmm. and just be able to handle it. Because life has a cause and effect and it has stages. Just like you at sea, when I learned in the Navy, you're either going into a storm, in the middle of a storm, or you coming out of a storm. And all of us are involved in some type of situation with that. But learn how to immerse yourself in it and be neutral. Don't absorb yourself in the emotions. It's the best way you can, because we all have feelings. Absolutely. Z yeah. Z I don't want to miss out on, on your pointers either, because you do some amazing things. And just watching your live and we were on Facebook, so I don't see it all, but you're so vulnerable and authentic and transparent with what, what you have going on in your life that empowers people. So I want to make sure you point out a few of your. Thank your you. Points. I appreciate it. I see that we've got like 45 seconds, so I'll be quick. <laughs> uh, but again, you know, I mean, and we've talked about some of that. Reggie, important thing that you just said there, no is an answer. It is a complete sentence. Learn how to use it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh um, but yeah, you know, proactive, I am proactive. I do. And I love what you said, Reggie, Plan my day starts last night, right? My day started yesterday evening when I looked at my schedule, what I had on the schedule. Um, 
uh, communicated with the people that I had on my schedule. Hey, reminder about our appointment tomorrow at two, whatever that is. Um, setting my priorities, setting my intentions, mm -hmm. and making sure that I get enough sleep and enough rest so that I can get up bright and early the next morning and manage my morning before anybody else interferes with my day. I get up, I have water, I work out, I read a book, I meditate. That is my space, that's a, my environment, and that sets the tone for the morning. Uh, make my bed and don't snooze, right? I mean, those are things literally, and then I get up and I do a little power pose, like this is my day and I'm gonna rule it, right? And I can reset that at any point. So if something ruffles my feathers and I get a little out of whack, I take control back and I just reset my intention, reset my goal and, you know, plow through. I have to remember that I am worthy. I am strong. I have it right here on my, you know, on my wall. These are things that, right, we have to protect our mindset, protect our environment. And that includes things like news, newspapers, radios. Who are you listening to? Who are we surrounding ourselves with? And if it's not pushing us forward, it's pulling us backwards. So, you know, be careful about those things. Yeah, I agree. I love what you said, Ziggy. We have to protect uh, our mental health. And as realtors, for me, I have to keep my commitments. And when I go to sleep at night, if I kept all my commitments to myself or I did my very best, and if I kept all my commitments that I made to anyone else, you'll get into a habit of not over committing. And believe me, you'll feel better. <laughs> You'll commit to, you know, to what matters. So this has been a great conversation. Thank you yes. for leaving, Biggie. Oh, my pleasure. And, I, you know, I love that you guys, you, you all show up and we'll do this again if, if needed, but we do want to wrap it up and thank everybody for their time. One word before we go, each of us, what's like, what's your biggest takeaway or the biggest thing that you want to share in one word today? I'd say start today. Just... Love it. I would say be you. Yeah. Awesome. And I'd say intention. Yeah. This has been three words I'd say we love you. <laughs> we love yeah, you. All. We love you all. We love everybody. And if anybody needs help, right? We're here we're as resources. I we're we're all, you know, it it coaches, mentors, right? We we uh love to share and spend our time helping others. So I think uh, you know, reach out and plug into EXP Realty. Pull your resources, check us out on Workplace, and we'll make sure you get connected. Take care, exactly. everyone. Awesome. Thanks so much.